Michael, how long have they been sprayed? How many years? Well, most people believe that they've uh, they've started full scale deployment probably uh, around 1995, 1997. It's looking like in certain regions, such as uh, up north in, in Alaska and those areas where we're seeing uh, a greater uh, deficiency in our ozone layer, uh, there's been speculation uh, for about 40 years. Um, but, but again, I think full-scale deployment with these programs just in about the past uh, 15 years. And, and that's really um, when we've begun to see uh, the, the greater challenges to, to our environment. Um, uh, but, but again, in, in certain areas for a long time, they definitely have been testing. Has it been long enough to track it for specific health problems and issues? Well, I, you know, I think so, because with, within the past 10 years, you know, we, we have seen the respiratory mortality, as, as we spoke about, but then aluminum-related illnesses. So, so absolutely, um, with, without a doubt. And, uh, again, I think it's important to note that um, what we're finding in tests, this is not speculation, and uh, the levels of, of aluminum barium and, and other heavy metals uh, that, again, match geoengineers' plans that are showing up in hair follicle tests, uh, urine tests, and also blood tests, uh, are, are increasing. So, so these metals are showing up. Uh, that's, that's, again, not speculation. Those uh, are, are coming up in tests. So um, I, I think so. And, and uh, again, a number of illnesses related have been uh, on the increase. Based on your research, what are some of the primary things that are being sprayed? Well, uh, again, what, what we found is, is this, uh, this geoengineering footprint. So that's what I've really focused on. And, and uh, again, it's, it's aluminum oxide. And uh, while geoengineers have, have initially in, in their program stated that sulfur dioxide would, would be effective for what they're trying to accomplish, they've uh, moved their models into aluminum oxide, uh, stating that, that it's lighter weight and, and more reflective. We believe that they're are many agendas to the aluminum oxide. Hopefully we can talk about that when we talk about my new project, uh, Why in the World Are, are They Spraying? Uh, you can find out info on my website, truthmediaproductions.us. Uh, but, but again, aluminum has many different applications, which I've come to learn. Uh, but then barium as well. Barium is another component um, that can be used for, for more uh, applications. And, and then strontium. And, and again, these are showing up. Uh, in massive quantities, and, and uh, George, they are so toxic to uh, our environment. And, and one thing that uh, I really forgot to, to stress, I know I mentioned it, our ozone is, is being depleted, and, and NOAA just came out, uh, National Ocean uh, Administration, I think I left one word out, but they just came out with a study. National, there's a National Oceanic and Atmospheric, right? <laughs> Thanks, yeah. Thanks for, uh, for correcting me. Uh, but they came out with a study showing that our ozone is being depleted. And going back to San Diego, uh, to the geoengineering conference, and, and the, the risks associated with geoengineering go on and on and on. Uh, and the benefits uh, really uh, are very short. They say cooling the planet is one of the benefits. We know these programs actually warm the programs. So the benefits are... In the hands of these people that call themselves the elite, I like to call them the criminal elite. So, uh, but uh, uh, again, these uh, the, the numbers and what we're what we're seeing is is not speculation at all. Exp explain the spraying process, Michael. The kinds of planes, how it's done, how they load it, where they uh, where they take off from, where they land. Well, I, I think that's a great question, and it's not an easy question because. Uh, again, we have to realize these are worldwide programs. Aerosols are showing up everywhere, uh, and the trails and, and the fallout is showing up everywhere. So um, obviously they're spraying out from a number of different locations, uh, being loaded at, at a number of different locations. And uh, while we've uncovered quite a bit, um, that's one area that I have yet to research. But I know a lot of people have researched uh, in Linked, uh, a lot of people believe Evergreen Air, which, uh, as you probably know, used to be a CIA front company, and they still are, but uh, used to be called Air America, which has been linked to, to a number of black ops and, and other programs. But 
uh, if you look on their website, they boast about their uh, their super tanker airplane, which has the ability to to spray aerosols and and seed clouds and do a number of other things. But but again, um, they they state that they can take uh, off out of most uh, airports, uh, larger airports around the uh, around the country. All right. So now, as they spray, how come pilots haven't come forward yet, or have they? Well, we there have been some people who have come forward, but uh, they have not been willing to give their name. And in terms of my research, it's important for the integrity and, and not to promote anything that could be disinformation. But uh, think about these programs. If you're a pilot, you're involved in the black uh, ops program, uh, blowing the whistle is very challenging. And, you know, I question anybody that, that would, would overlook the uh, dots that have been connected, which are immense, and, and will connect more dots uh, to these programs, uh, to look at the Manhattan Project, which uh, had tens of thousands of people uh, involved with that program, went on for many years before anybody blew the whistle. Um, we are hoping, and one of the reasons for uh, producing What in the World Are They Spraying was really to reach out to the pilots. And, and I think a lot of them, what they're being told is probably they're part of something good or maybe something um, that that is saving the planet, and, and I think a lot of them probably believe that. So again, that's one of the reasons um, for producing the film, really to reach out. And we are hoping to to get a solid uh, whistleblower, but uh, there are a number of people now who who are moving forward with lawsuits. So if there's anybody in the military involved with these programs, uh, I would encourage you to to watch the film. Uh, please be aware of what you're a part of, and. And tonight, I hope that we can get into, you know, some of the agendas and, and who really benefits from, from these programs. But bottom line is this. The people who are involved in this uh, and the toxins that, that they're spraying, they're not only killing uh, themselves, but also their family members uh, and their loved ones. So it's a deep concern of ours. And, uh, you know, I've spoken to a lot of scientists and, and people who have been researching this on the health basis. The, the damage that has been done to our ecosystem, to uh, to our ozone layer, is is immense. And bottom line is this: the collapse is happening so quick, our ecosystem cannot take much more spraying. So I urge anybody to uh, who who might be involved in listening to come forward. Go to my website, uh, truthmediaproductions.us. Please send me an email. Uh, we'll talk in confidence and. Uh, We'll see what we can do about this, but but uh, it, it's definitely an issue that needs to be addressed. It's a challenge, you know. If if you're a pilot uh, and you have a military career, we believe this is primarily military, but many different corporations involved with this to come mm-hmm. forward uh, could be very damaging not only to your career but perhaps your family. Because uh, again, what I hope we get into is is the enormous amount of power that uh, enables certain individuals to gain. Um, from these programs, and weather control is a very effective way to uh, consolidate power into the hands of the few and bring about the political change uh, of the globalist agenda. So, um, and, and I really believe that's why we haven't seen anybody credible, but we, we're just uh, really calling out to, to those people. All right, and Michael, give us give us some examples on how this can tilt the world's power balance. If you're controlling this, if you're spraying, how does it benefit that person, that well, country? I, I think that's that's a great question. We covered in uh, in what in the world are they spraying? Uh, a document called "Owning the Weather by 2025," and and that is definitely an agenda by our current military. Um, how do these programs relate to it? Well, in many ways, we we came to find out um, that uh, I went to an aerosol research conference uh, about a month and a half ago, and I. I found out some things that, that I, I pretty much knew. And the reason I went there, after filming What in the World Are They Spraying, a, a lot of people are saying, well, why? You know, we, we believe they're spraying, and some people don't believe they're spraying because they say, why would, you know, these people spray themselves if, if they're breathing the same air? And I hope that we can cover that tonight. I have two theories on that. But, um, again, the question comes out, why? So I went to that conference. And I spoke with many different scientists, including a NASA scientist. What I found out was that aerosols uh, dispersed in our air uh, do affect clouds, their nucleation, and, and rains in certain areas. 
I, and I found out every uh, every uh, uh, scientist that I spoke with at that conference said, yes, geoengineering programs can, without a doubt, uh, give geoengineers the ability to control our weather. Uh, we also found out that, that aluminum uh, being dispersed in our sky, and we know that's a primary ingredient, uh, is, a, is a, not a great conductor like in wire around, around our homes, but it's a very effective conductor in the sky due to uh, it's lightweight and other properties, and uh, I think many people have noticed that we're seeing an increase in lightning storms, uh, especially in regions like Hawaii that used to rarely get uh, lightning, but they're getting it on a regular basis. Anyways, uh, being that aluminum is a conductor, um, it gives these entities the ability to actually heat up parts of our environment, and in many uh, people, including me or meteorologists who I've been spoken to, uh, to notice that uh, about 500 miles ahead of a storm, there is intense spraying. And uh, uh, many people around the world email me and they say, yeah, with, during heavy spray days, we know, you know, it's going to rain within a day or two. And it's uh, exactly what happens. But anyways, that aluminum can be heated up. Uh, and actually, when it, it raises uh, the atmosphere, which creates a low pressure system and enables them to steer storms. So with the technology that they have, uh, in the different uh, particulates that they seed the clouds with, uh, it definitely gives them the ability to corporatize our weather in in the sky um, on a regular basis is different than than uh, a contrail. I mean, contrails have been around uh, since airplanes have been flying. That's right. And uh, they're natural, and they're short for condensation trail. And, uh, you know, they've, again, they've been in around uh, as early as airplanes have been flying. But what we're seeing now uh, on a regular basis are, without a doubt, aerosols from geoengineering programs. And, and uh, again, these aerosols match uh, what's expressly outlined in numerous geoengineering uh, models, and, and they're actually sprayed from airplanes. Uh, and they do not dissipate. They actually spread out and uh, create what appears to be uh, cirrus cloud cover. Um, and they actually block the sun. And uh, we, we see it on a regular basis, not only here in Los Angeles, but this is being reported uh, now around the world. Now, the, the, the normal contrails, contrails, will every jet engine spit that out, or does the climate or the temperatures or the conditions have to be just right when they're flying? Well, that's a great question, and, and you're absolutely correct. Um, it requires very specific conditions. Um, and actually, from, from what I've learned, uh, contrails are very rare. So we should not be seeing them on a regular basis, uh, let's say in regions like Hawaii, where, where they've been reported uh, in, in, in very high amounts, especially in the past two years. Um, and then over areas of uh, of Arizona, uh, where I lived for a number of years, and uh, used to be called the Valley of the Sun. Those who are aware of this issue now call it the Valley of Chemtrails. So, uh, yes, they're absolutely uh, extremely rare and, and certainly not what we're seeing in, in mes many, uh, many desert regions and, and tropical regions. Now, you talk about a geoengineering plan, which is interesting. Uh, uh, tell us about the the plans. Tell us about the agenda, in your opinion. Well, um, it was interesting because uh, a geoengineer's model uh, includes spraying 10 to 20 million tons of toxic aluminum into our skies. Um, these models are proposed for what they say is the stated goal of cooling the planet. So uh, they say putting aluminum oxide, which is very uh, reflective, would reflect that sun. However, numerous... Um, Studies actually show that putting aerosols into our sky will create a short-term cooling, uh, but actually an overall warming because those aerosols act as a uh, as a blanket. So they will actually trap the heat in. And uh, in the past ten years, we've seen an increase in nighttime highs. So, uh, so, so th that leads us to believe that there are many different agendas, and it looks like a very effective. Uh, sales strategy for programs that uh, are not in the best interest of the general public. Did they get approval? 
before this sprain, or does does government even know what's going on? Well, I think government is definitely involved. They, um, okay. With this, and again, geoengineers are denying that uh, these programs have been implemented. But uh, again, what we see in the sky on a regular basis matches their plans. And then the fallout of uh, aluminum, barium, and strontium, which uh, in some cases has escalated as high as 50,000 percentage points uh, in just about a six-year period in in certain tests. So we're seeing this escalation, uh, again, of what many people are calling this chemtrail geoengineering footprint. Um, But again, they're denying that these programs are started, stating that this is something that they don't want to do but may have to do to save us from uh, the supposed threat of global warming. So it's, uh, it's a deep concern of ours, and, and we, uh, again, think there are many agendas associated with this. Michael, why the cloud of secrecy? Why don't they simply just come right out and say, folks, you're, you've been right over the years. There are chemtrails. This is what we're doing. This is why we're doing it. We don't want to hide anything. Why the, the, the secrecy? Well, it's, it's a good question, and, and geoengineers now are coming forth and stating, yes, we are doing a little bit of regional testing, but, but again, they're denying the existence of a full-scale deployment. And, and uh, George, it's, it's real simple. These programs are they're crimes against nature and humanity. Um, the toxicity in terms of environmental uh, are astronomical, and the human health implications are, are unquantifiable, and hopefully we can get into some of those. But, of course, uh, yeah. Uh, again, we, we believe that this has nothing to do uh, with blocking the sun and, and protecting us from global warming, but uh, it, it has much to do with a consolidation of power uh, into the hands of the corporate elite uh, at the expense of everybody uh, on the planet. So it's very challenging if, if you have a program to, uh, that, that would give you a tremendous amount of power uh, at the expense of many people, it's very challenging to to get public support uh, for these programs. But I think it's something because it is so visible. We do see it on a regular basis. And again, people are waking up to what's going on. So I think it's something that they have to bring out into the public. And ob- obviously, again, sell it as something uh, that that's to our benefit, which which they clearly are not. Is the hidden agenda different from the the manipulation and the spraying for weather conditions, which the Chinese, for example, have freely admitted that they do this? And, of course, we know that we have uh, sprayed hurricanes and clouds. We've tried to seed them as well. Are there two different agendas here, the weather agenda and then this other agenda to make money? Well, I, I think they go hand in hand. And, and, again, I think there are three primary agendas with this, um, and we can get into the genetically modified uh, seeds. But weather control is very uh, much of a uh, – uh, very much uh, gives certain individuals and corporations tremendous amount of financial gain. Um, so, so I believe that they go hand in hand. But, uh, again, I think – uh, there's many different agendas, but I believe that weather control, based on what we've studied, is the number one agenda to it. And what we uncovered, uh, based, based on our, our latest research, and as you know, we're working uh, on a film called Why in the World Are They Spraying? that has a major focus uh, on the weather modification. So, yeah, there are many different reasons uh, for this, but uh, definitely weather control and monetary gain go hand in hand. Let's talk a little bit about some of the toxins that are found in rain and snow tests. Tell us about this, Michael. Yeah, that's, uh, that's interesting. What we uncovered in What in the World Are They Spraying, uh, there's, again, this geoengineering footprint of aluminum, barium, and strontium. Um, what we covered in the film was, uh, was uh, in the area of Northern California. And uh, in that area, several years ago, um, probably about seven years ago, scientists started noticing that uh, the forest was collapsing, grass was not growing, uh, and certain natural organic foods were not growing. So they started doing tests of, uh, of the soil. And what they found was really concerning. They found that the soil pH in that area was changing anywhere from uh, 10 to 12 times the normal alkalinity uh, of the soil. So That's it's, huge. It's a huge concern. And, and anybody with basic uh, science knowledge knows that when the soil pH changes, what requires an acidic soil 
will start to die, and that's exactly uh, what was happening. So they started doing uh, other tests, and in a rain tests are very uh, effective uh, uh, indicators of what's in our atmosphere. And uh, what they found was astronomical. Again, massive amounts of uh, aluminum, barium, and strontium. Those oxides will change a soil pH from, uh, from uh, acidic to alkaline. Exactly uh, what was going on. Um, I think it's important to note, again, those numbers have increased as high as 50,000 percentage points uh, in certain tests, and it's not limited to uh, the Northern California area. Since we uh, came out with uh, the film, What in the World Are They Spraying?, people have been testing uh, around the world, and again, they've been finding that exact footprint and seeing the same environmental uh, consequences as, as uh, they were seeing in Northern California. Um, those uh, those uh, numbers were not there uh, a number of years ago before the trails were there. They are there now, and again, uh, it's a real simple equation. Uh, they match uh, what geoengineers expressly outline in, in a number of their models, and, and they match a number of patents uh, that were designed to specifically spray uh, aluminum oxide and barium and, and uh, other toxins uh, out of airplanes for the stated goal of cooling the planet. And, uh, uh, again, those, uh, those match uh, the plants exactly, and they're coming up everywhere, George. It's, it's, uh, it's not limited to that area.